The adoption centre here was opened in 1993 by Eileen McCallum from Take the High Road. It's purpose built, it's the only purpose built centre of its type in Scotland. Uh, we're here to rehome uh, cats, unwanted litters, stray cats and abandoned cats. Cats Protection was founded in 1927. Our vision is a world where every cat is treated with kindness and understanding of its needs. Uh, we're doing this by emphasising education, rehoming and neutering of cats to prevent unwanted litters. We have a total of 110 pens and we're divided unequally into four sectors. We have our isolation unit which is five pens. The remainder of the cattery is built up of an admissions wing for cats who are just coming in, a kitten wing uh, which also forms part of a maternity wing for the kittens who are coming in and we also have a rehoming wing which is our main wing. These are the cats that have been signed off as fit by the vet and are ready to be rehomed to the public. Generally, it depends on each individual cat. Uh, each individual cat will be treated as an individual. Our policy is if an owner hands a cat and we'll keep it for seven days before we try to rehome it in case they change their mind. For strays, we'll keep them for a fortnight, uh, again, in case someone reports the cat missing. Generally, the cat will be brought in we allocated a pen, it'll be examined by a member of staff to check on its general overall condition. Anything that's urgent will be taken straight away to a vet. Uh, other than that, it'll see a vet. Our vets come up here twice a week, so it'll see them during one of their routine visits. Uh, every cat that leaves here will have been seen by a vet. It'll have a full medical history. They'll have an understanding of how the cat's behaved for the time it's been in the pen, albeit the pen's an alien environment to them. Uh, they'll also be microchipped and neutered before they leave. There's a total of 20 staff, including myself. We have a groundsman who maintains the garden here. We also have a full-time and two part-time receptionists, two deputy managers, and the rest are either full-time or part-time cat care assistants. Typical day, they start at 8 o'clock in the morning, and the first task of the day is to feed. Every cat in the premises will be fed at 8 o'clock in the morning. Their next task is to start uh, issuing the medication that's been prescribed by the vets. Then they get into the cleaning part of the routine, which will take them up to around about lunchtime, when it's then time to feed the kittens again. Their afternoons will be spent doing home visits, uh, socialising cats, and anything else that needs done around the premises. 4 o'clock again is the next feeding time. Uh, again, every cat will get fed again and medicated as per prescription. Hi there, I'm Jax. Um, I'm 60, retired last August. I live in Glasgow. Um, thinking about getting another cat. I had two cats years ago, Shannon and Oscar. They were both, Shannon was 18 when she died and Oscar was 17. Um, Shannon used to lie around my shoulders while I peeled potatoes or did dishes at the sink. Um, they were such lovable cats. And last year my daughter Lucy got me a cat, a kitten, for my birthday. Um, I called him Edward from the Twilight books. He was ginger and white and just a gorgeous, but he was a maniac. He used to bite me all the time and jump out at me. Um, and I used to have to go to work with bandages up my arm. People thought I was a self-harmer. So in the end, I had to give him away. So now I would like to get another cat. And I'm thinking about going to the Cats Protection League. Um, my mum actually got one there. I think Max about eight, eight nine or ten. And I'm just hoping to get a cat. Um, I think this time maybe an older cat a big fluffy cat that I can cuddle and, and just have fun with it and love it. Look at this one, Mum. Gosh, I can take them home. Oh. Hello. Is that an Hello. indoor cat you guys are? No, it's an indoor. I live in a flat. Is it an indoor? Uh, we don't have a lot of indoors in at the moment. Um, but the indoor cats that we get are only very quickly. Obviously, kind of people in flats. Uh -huh. um, there's only about two or three actually that are in the um, Yeah, that's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah, big, big ball of this cat here. Um, 
He's indoor. Yeah, he's FIV. He's got FIV virus, which means he can't mix with other cats. So we have to home as an indoor. Mm -hmm. um, he's a lovely big friendly guy. Um, when he came into us, he had severe entropion, which is the eyelids are turning in the way. And his eyelids were actually grown into his eyes. Oh, that's awful. So he had to have like, an operation and part of his eyelid removed and re-stitched. But he's recovered really well and he's doing great. He's some size, isn't he? He is, he's massive. Uh, he's no called Big Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we never put a healthy cat to sleep. That's, that's our policy. Both of these cats are a bit kind of, what you might say, a kind of challenge. <laughs> uh, Boris is FIV again. He's lovely most of the time. <laughs> he was surviving as a stray for quite a while. So sometimes he gets a bit kind of swipey, you know, he just, you never know kind of what they've been through when they've been a stray. I know. And it's just kind of, he's just sort of trying to win his trust back with humans again. Hello. He has Aww. a wee back now and again. You're gorgeous. And you can see he's had a hard paper round by the... <laughs> oh. Hey. Oh. <laughs> a wee mouth. A wee. Yeah, that was that. it. I had a cat before, look. You still get the scars. Oh, was that, that a bite? Was, was that a scratch? It's a bite. It's a bite, yeah. It's a kitten my daughter got me last year. Right. Edward, I called him for the Twilight books. <laughs> That's why he bit you. I think it is. <laughs> I think he thought he was a vampire. It's not exactly with no questions asked. We obviously want to know why the cat's coming back. Uh, but yes, we'll take the cat back. Uh, there's absolutely no hesitation in that at all. And if they, for whatever reason, there's another cat that's suitable for them, that's fine. But we do try to find out why the cat's coming back. Is it a behavioural issue? Or we'll try to work through it. But if it's not going to work, the cat comes back. Actually, got another indoor cat that the reserve came off today. He's not in the homing wing yet. Uh, he's another FIV cat. He's very young, he's between one and two. Uh, he's called Hamish. He's a cat, sort of ginger and white. He's an absolute sweetheart. Mm -hmm. But the family couldn't afford to take another cat. They kind of, between the time they reserved them and the time the home visit was going to get done. I can bring him through and let you see him. He's, not, he's in the other wing at the moment. OK. The fee at present is £50 for a, a, any cat, £75 for two cats, or if there's any of the cats that are classed as long stay, hard to home, or on long term medication, we can reduce the adoption fee slightly. Uh, we try to get them out the door as quickly as we can. Normally we'll endeavour to get our home visits done within 48 hours of someone reserving a cat. If the home visit's successful, they can come in the following day, or if the home visit's early in the afternoon, they can come in that afternoon, pick the cat up. Aww. Hello Hamish. It's lovely. Hello. Oh. So he was strained, but we think he's between one and two years old. Hello. Um, again, Isn't he lovely? He's really friendly. I think he's really friendly. He just loves getting cuddled and because that's what I want, isn't it? I want a cuddly. When I can cuddle. My cat does it. Where's it? He cuddles. Does it sit in the knee? Let him down. You're a big man. Hello. He's very vocal as well. Oh, that's good. Uh -huh. We don't know how long he was straight for. Hello. Oh, he's absolutely gorgeous. But he's been really healthy. Apart from that, he's been in a fight. He's contracted the FIV virus. But apart from that, he's been really healthy. Um, Hello, come on then. Come see me. Go see your granny. <laughs> he doesn't have too many issues either. Sometimes we've been strained for a while. They might have yeah. issues with people, but he's really friendly. Come on then. Come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. He's lovely. We're it's financed entirely by public donation. Uh, we do get a lot of our money through legacies. But other than that, it's either generated through the cats going out the door or donations coming into us, cheques coming in, anything at all. Uh, the main thing about a home visit is matching the right cat to the right people in the right location. For instance, if it's an outdoor cat, make sure the location has a garden. Conversely, if it's an indoor cat, the people understand what that kind of entails. Uh, also, just kind of basic cat care, um, allowing the cat to settle in period and just basic responsibility of owning a cat. Some people get a cat from them that haven't had a cat before, they don't know what to expect, they don't know a cat can cause a bit of damage to the house, etc. Um, also, we give the people a full kind of medical history 
and a full lowdown if the cat's passed as much as we know if the cat's came from an owner. So just as much information as we can and there's a chance for the people themselves to ask any questions about cats and about the cat care. The cats that you describe as kind of unsocial or cats that kind of had a hard time or might have a few kind of issues you might say, um, take, they take a bit of work. Um, we, we try to do put them through a kind of socialisation programme, starting off in, in small steps, uh, working with them, uh, build, building up gradually. Um, we've actually got uh, one of the reception staff, uh, Davila, who is uh, quite gifted at working with the kind of hard to home cats. She spends a lot of time with them. At first going to the pen, just talking with them softly, gradually building up to touching the cat and basically winning the cat's trust. It's all about winning the cat's trust over because the cat may have been through some sort of kind of traumatic events in the past. So it's just a kind of gradual process of small steps to build the cat's trust back up so it can be part of a family again. It's a kind of job that kind of sort of it, it, one day it can destroy your kind of faith in humankind and then it can, you can kind of reinstate it the next day. You know, people come in to take cats that are especially hard to home. Um, we work with a lot of kind of uh, cats that have been through some kind of extreme cruelty and had quite traumatic lives. And to see a cat that's been one of these cats to be home to a kind of loving home is very, very rewarding. Um, you try not to become, you try yourself not to become too emotionally attached to the cats. Um, it's easier said than done. You always end up becoming quite attached to one or two. Um, but to see them going somewhere that you're happy with them, uh, people you people you like, homes you know are going to be loved, then that is very rewarding at the end of the day. We're around about the hundred mark, eight hundred to thousands over the year. Thank you.